Hi, everyone, and welcome to American Writers Insider Podcast. I'm Editor-in-Chief Kevin Duke. Joining us on this episode is Sebastian Shope, the newly appointed CEO of Eagle Rider. Eagle Rider is renowned as one of the premier motorcycle rental companies in the world, and it also hosts a variety of tours. Let's learn about his plans for Eagle Rider's future. Let's kick this off. Uh, we're here with Eagle Rider's new CEO, uh, Sebastian Shope. Is that how you pronounce your name, Sebastian? That, that is actually how you pronounce it. Like soap, just Shope. Okay. And so you got uh, brought on board with Eagle Rider in June, I think, right? What, why'd they bring you in? Yeah, so I've been here a uh, little, little over two months now. And Eagle Rider is at a, a very interesting a crossroads right now, or a, little, um, a very interesting phase of growth where we have our existing customer base, but then there is another customer base out there, a younger demographic that we're trying to make aware of the brand, but also get them to rent and ride and get them on tours and our off-road tours, uh, you know, motorcycle rides. And uh, I've done this before, um, before taking on this, this role, I was the CEO of Gold's Gym worldwide. Mm -hmm. And they faced a similar challenge where, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, all these guys built Gold's Gym in the 60s, 70s, all the way through the 90s. And, uh, you know, a Gold's Gym under previous ownership uh, lost a bit of its way of what it really stands for and how can you really focus on the product and then also tweak the product that you don't lose the legacy members or legacy customers that you have, but also prepared for the future. And uh, we've done that successfully over there. So I think uh, the ownership group here may have seen some potential there and that's that's why they brought me in. Okay, so you've got a number of businesses. You've got some ideas on how to change or uh, tweak some of them. So what's the core business? And then what's the business maybe that isn't really so prominent right now, but you think has good potential in the future? So the main the main uh, business component of Eagle Rider are our rentals. Um, but that's a combination between rentals, like uh, individual rentals, groups come in or individuals come in and get a bike and just go on a, go off on their own and, uh, you know, go for a round trip or they do a one way from, I don't know, Chicago to here uh, just on, on their own uh, pace. But then the second big, uh, you know, component of the business are our tours, our guided tours. And the, the biggest one here is actually a tour from uh, Chicago to L.A. It's our Route 66 tour. It's about 15 days or so, and you ride in a group, and our guides have been on this tour. We have a guide that has done the tour over 66 times, uh, so he knows every 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 corner of the uh, Route 66 uh, here, and uh, they stop at the most important site, so you don't have to worry about it. You just follow the lead, um, and uh, you just follow along, and they stop at the most important sites and, and tell you about the history, and, and obviously everybody wants to do it from Chicago to LA and end up uh, you know, at Santa Monica Pier rather than the other way around. So actually the way it was built. So those two are the biggest components is the the, the uh, rentals that we have you know, through uh, different OEMs. So with Harleys, Triumphs, uh, Royal Enfield, uh, BMW. So there's anything you can choose from. But then we also have the guided tours that are a big component to our business as well. Well, there's a lot of tour companies around. I, I'm not sure any of them have somebody who has ridden Route 66 60 what times? Over 66 times. I think he hit 66 uh, a couple of years ago. So he's done he's done quite a few of those. No, I think it's it's very special, and our guides are uh, very special to us because they just love to ride, and if they can, you know, pass on that passion, uh, you know, to to other riders and and give them the greatest experience because. You know, especially our international uh, customers that come in from mainly Germany, France, um, you know, they come from the UK, from Italy. It's a dream of of, of theirs to go on a, a Harley Davidson and take the Route 66 tour. It's like one of those bucket list items, if not the bucket list item for them. And if we can make it a great experience with our, um, you know, phenomenal guides, we're, we're happy to do that. Okay, so you've got global customers and you've also got global operations. How many locations does Eagle Rider have and how many of them are in the United States? So we have about 200 locations worldwide. The majority of them are in the U.S., but then we have our uh, franchisees and also our affiliates throughout the world. So if you flew to Australia, we have Eagle Rider locations there. If you want to rent with Eagle Rider in Japan, you can do that. Uh, obviously, all across the U.S. and then in Europe, from Ireland all the way to Morocco, uh, we have we have a bike for you. Especially in Spain and Italy, you know uh, Tuscany, 
uh, around Barcelona, like all, I always say that our locations are like golf courses. They're in the most beautiful areas uh, because that's where it's worth riding, you know, and that's that's where we we set up shop and uh, have have great a great partner network throughout throughout the world and uh, can deliver those uh, unforgettable uh, memories uh, across different uh, geographical but also cultural borders. That seems like a very efficient way to tour by motorcycle. Instead of like spending a couple of days riding to the location you want to get, you can just fly in there, pick up a bike, a bike that's in great condition, a recent model, and ride it around and drop it off and fly home. So instead of burning a couple of weeks on a vacation, you could do it in five or seven days, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, you know, you touched on something with uh, the uh, age of our models. So we have latest models. So 23, 24 is what we have right now. And then we we defleet them and bring in new bikes every year. And we don't run the miles up very high so that you always get a uh, a bike that's in tip top shape that you can take. And, you know, speaking of that, of the travel and you have to, you can fly and ride basically. And you, you uh, asked me the question before and I didn't answer what are the components, the product components that are not well known yet, or, you know, are not the main focus. And one of them is our club Eagle rider. Uh, and there's two versions of that. So one is, so let me explain what, what it is uh, before we get into this. Yeah. So it starts at $29 a month. And for those $29 a month, you can pick up a bike one day per month and just ride it around. So this is great for people that um, are local and they want to try different bikes. Uh, so you come and you buy this credit for $29 and you use that credit on a bike and you go out and you take it out for a day. And the bigger the bike, then you may need two credits. Um, you know, like a, for, for a Harley Road Glide is obviously uh, different than a Scrambler. But you can you can try all these different bikes. It's good for people that want to have that ultimate garage of all these different bikes. They may own their bike, but they want to ride something else uh, for a day or two. And uh, also for people that have not made a decision which bike to purchase yet. So if you finish the riding school and you don't know what bike to get because it's a big investment, and if we're honest, nobody really needs a motorcycle, but you want to you get the right one for you, you can come to Eagle Rider and with that club membership, you can try out uh, different bikes. And then within that club, there's also a different target group, and we we uh, always say it's the it's the bike in your suitcase. So if you are traveling and you're a club member and you fly somewhere else, you can use your credits at uh, a lot of those locations worldwide and pick up another bike that you may not ride at your in your hometown. So that's one component that we're we're going to uh, be focusing on, in addition to a few others. But uh, I think there's a lot of potential in this club in the subscription model, where uh, you know you have access to this ultimate garage of all these different bikes. But I also believe that eventually, if you if you keep on renting and at some point you you want your own bike, <laughs> everybody's going to buy their own bike and then they're going to customize it. And at the end of the day, it's going to be the best bike in the world for them. Right. Uh, so I think that's it's a good way to try out you know what you want. If it, is, is it a Sportster? Is it a Cruiser? Is it a uh, is it a performance bike? Um, so that that will really help because the. Um, uh, barrier of entry and the price point is so low that you can actually try it out without, uh, you know, making a big purchase and maybe I don't want to say the wrong purchase, but there may be a more optimal uh, purchase in the future. Yeah, people are always asking me, you know, what bike should I buy, right? And different riders appreciate different things on bikes, so it's hard to make a recommendation that this bike will be perfect for you. And if you can just for as little as twenty nine dollars a month, or uh, you know, a hundred or two hundred dollars for a, a rental day, if you're not a Eagle Club Eagle rider member, you could try the bike. And so I think this is the bike for me. And so you can come in and ride the bike, and you could find out. Oh, I, I this is the perfect bike, or oh, I don't like this. I'm going to keep looking. And so it's like the the ultimate demo ride, right? That's really what it is. And I'll tell you my story if we have a couple minutes. So I started renting with Eagle Rider in 2017 uh, while I was still with with uh, the fitness group. And uh, my first ride, my first ever motorcycle ride was uh, from this. Uh, I'm actually at the LAX location here uh, for Eagle Rider. So my very first motorcycle ride ever was from this location on an Indian Scout. <laughs> and six months later, I came back to the store. We rented again and it was a uh, Harley Davidson Street Glide. And we took it up through the canyons of Malibu and then up to Ojai and then Neptune's Net for some crab lakes and then back here. And then I flew out a couple months later, I flew out to Miami and rented from Eagle Rider again, uh, another street glide. And I rode the street glide all the way down to Key West and back 
It's a beautiful ride, obviously. Not very many turns, but it's a beautiful ride. Mm -hmm. And after this ride, so I spent about 15 hours or so on the street glide. I went to the Harley dealership here in LA, in Glendale, and I said, I would like to buy one because I spent 15 hours on this. And a rental is a rental. You know, it's it's all stock. Um, so there's no, no customizations, nothing like that. But if I didn't spend 15 hours on that bike, I would not have gotten, I switched to a road glide, uh, but I would not have spent that amount of money on a bike. Because like you said, you, you the test, it's the ultimate demo, right? Because that's what our, our partners, our OEM partners see, that we can deliver the experience of their bike for an extended period of time before their customers make the decision to purchase. Because a three-mile ride around a dealership, I don't think will justify a price point of $30,000 for a for top-of-the-line motorcycle, right? So I, I did that. Now I own three bikes. Uh, you know, I kept on collecting and adding to to the collection, but that was that is how I used Eagle Rider very much in the beginning is trying out these bikes and renting is is riding for me number one and number two what kind of bike would I like and then went out and purchase it. I I think I've heard you say something like the end of the road is always a purchase. Maybe you could explain that. I think so because it, it's always whenever I dropped off the bike and now, you know, we had, um, we were actually riding on the East coast about four weeks ago. And then also in Milwaukee for uh, Harley Davidson homecoming. And we now have actually uh CVO road glides in our portfolio for a limited period of time. And I was riding the CVO for a few days and then I had to drop it off and it was quite sad. <laughs> and I really don't, I really don't need a CVO road, ed, but it was, it was, uh, you know, a little sad dropping it off. And we see this all the time, especially with uh, our international customers here at LAX. When they finish their tour, we have people leaving a rose on the on the seat and, you know, taking a, one more picture of the bike. I think it's always sad if you drop off that bike. But it, that's why I say I think the end of the road is a purchase because you want to have it for yourself and you're going to ride it uh, for forever. And I've seen, you know, now I just get, got back from Sturgis uh, a couple of days ago. And you see people riding their bikes and, and, and customizing their bikes and just loving their bikes. Uh, you can't do that on a rental. It's great to get into riding or if you're traveling, but at some point your bike will reflect your character, I think. Yeah. But a rental will never do that. Is it Harley the, the take up the bulk of your rental fleet or how does it break down? The majority are Harley Davidsons, um, and that is mainly driven by the um by the demand of international customers, like when they do come to the US, they do want to ride a Harley in, yeah. you know, either Route 66 or through the canyons or, you know, around Sturgis and even uh, down south. You know, we have a uh, Bikes, Blues and Barbecue tour as well around New Orleans, you know, running up uh, towards the north of the country. And that that is that is one bulk. But then we also have, you know, the the, the Harley models are usually the touring models. But then we also have customers that want to come in and get smaller bikes as well. So we have uh, Yamahas, uh, we have the Triumphs, uh, Royal Enfield. Um, so we have a, a good BMWs, the R90, all the way to their touring bikes, uh, you know, uh, as well. And so we have a good selection of, of OEM. So I believe there's like four or five different ones. We're bringing in some Ducatis now as well. The new Ducati Scrambler, uh, we bring a few of those and the Multistratas. So it's a good selection of, you know, nim small, nimble bikes for beginners or urban rides and, uh, you know, that don't need all the bags and all the accessories up to touring bikes that, you know, you can take around and, and hit 300 miles uh, a day and, and not feel sore after. Well, I love that. It's like the a huge demo fleet. And instead of having to get beat down by the finance guy in the dealership, uh, just to take it out for a three mile spin or whatever, rent it for a day and figure if uh, that's the bike for you or maybe you have a harley and you want to know what these royal infields are like right well it's right there you can take it out for a day or longer yeah and uh that's that's really what it is like you if you just get it for the day i know you invest quite a bit but the the smaller bikes they're like 100 bucks a day so it's not it doesn't necessarily break the bank but it gives you eight hours of riding and you can just don't stop just except for gas and you can just uh, speaking of gas, we also have some electric motorcycles. So we have some zeros in the, in the fleet as well. Uh, you know, if you want to try out an electric motorcycle, but that maybe you only stop and you can ride it for eight hours straight and just drop it off at the end of the day. And then, you know, if it's for you or not, because the purchase itself is much higher than the hundred bucks you may invest for, for the day. Hmm. 
That's a, an interesting one, uh, zero electric motorcycles. Uh, I've ridden a bunch of electric motorcycles now, and, and they're always kind of mind-blowing, right? It's a different thing. It's the same thing, but it's a different thing. And uh, uh, Harley-Davidson, Livewire, they've got a few uh, models now. And uh, I always recommend uh, if you get a chance to ride one, ride one. And with Eagle Rider, you don't have to wonder anymore. You could just uh, rent it for a day and find out. Yeah, and I, I do also like the electric motorcycle. That's one of my second motorcycle is actually a Zero SRF that I used to commute from my house to, to our offices here. And it's just, you know, people think it's not the, it's say it's not the real thing. There's no noise there, but it's something futuristic about it. Like the way it whizzes through the, you know, just you have that little, nice little tune, like the futuristic sound and the instant torque and, you know, uh, phenomenal acceleration and, and uh the range is also okay. Like it, it will never be a touring bike. It will always be a commuter yeah. bike. Um, but I charge it at home. You know, I plug it in when I get home, and then, you know, I take it off the next morning. I get two days out of it, like in my in my uh, commuting. But I also do quite a bit of freeway, and uh, it's just fun. They're, they're fun to ride. Like it's they're so easy. Also for beginners, I have to say, because you don't have to worry about the clutch, about shifting, and watching the traffic, and making a turn, and using the signals, and all these things that happen, you know, when you, when you get on a bike. So it's, it's cool to try those out as well. And uh, just for the convenience of it and the fun of it, like it really is a different experience zipping through the canyons uh, with, with no sound and just taking all the, all the nature sound, if you will, and a little bit of wind noise. Well, and that's the difference with all these motorcycles, right? They, they offer a different experience. And if you've wondered what it's like, uh, it's cool. You can just show up and take one out for a day and find out for yourself. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, I have this bike here and my, my other bike, my, my road glide is actually in Sturgis still. So I flew it, I, I shipped it. Luckily, I'm fortunate enough that we have trucks. We have a lot of semi trucks moving our bikes all over the U S every day because we have six to 700 bikes on the road every single day. And, uh, as I said earlier, some of them are one ways, so people don't want to ride them back. Yeah. So we have the semis, we have a great team of, of logistics partners and, they moved those bikes. So I put mine on a trailer to Denver and uh, then rode in to Sturgis from Denver. So about a six and a half hour ride. And it's my, it was my first Sturgis. So I said, I, I, while we have great bikes, I cannot take a rental on my first Sturgis ride. I have to bring my own bike and, you know, with the, with the big bags and things, it's not made for LA traffic. Mm -hmm. So I have in Sturgis and then now uh, we'll, after Sturgis is done, we are going to ship it to uh, Salt Lake city so I'm going to get in one more ride there to Park City and, and just ride around because this is one thing that I noticed after, you know, the last two months that we've been riding 2,500 miles or so uh, since, I, since I joined, you know, visiting our stores and going to events and going to partner rides. I just want to ride on my own again uh, and really remind myself why I actually got into, into riding. It's like this, you know, you clear your head and you just ride around. And if you see something nice, you just pull over. It's a little more complicated in a group, right? Uh, so... I'm going to get in a personal ride in, in Salt Lake, visit our store there, and then go up to Park City for a night and just, just ride through the mountains there. That'll be nice. And then probably ship it to the south, to the Sun Belt, because, you know, the weather is turning at some point. But there's always year-round year riding in, in the south of, of the U.S. So uh, we're focusing all of our winter business, actually, on the, on the south. Uh, we have a lot of tours coming up as well and uh, in, in the Sun Belt in Florida, California, and I believe uh, Texas areas. And we also shortened the tours for the winters, like winter getaways, like two or three nights, because most people are out of vacation days by the end of the year. <laughs> but if you could do a long weekend, we're, we're here for you. And if you want to get out of the, you know, uh, Chicago cold and, and go down to Florida or to uh, even to California or, or, or uh, Texas, we we offer the the get, winter getaway tours as well. So my bike is going to sit down there and then probably join a couple tours of those. Excellent. So that that's gonna that's one of the tweaks you're making to Eagle Rider, right? To putting in a few shorter tours, make it easier for people to do a quick getaway instead of a big commitment. Uh, what else do you see for the future? What what other tweaks you're gonna make to the program? So one is like I mentioned before the the club concept. You know, building more local uh, communities around the club component um, and like club rides and club activations. So that that there's real value of coming here and and riding together because. If you look at the at the industry, you know, you have the the Harley guys, you have the performance bike guys, and we have the scramblers and cafe racers, but they don't really ride together. And with Eagle Rider, you can actually do that because we have all the all the different bikes and you bring them together and they can ride 
uh, you know, uh, together. And, and all we need is a reason to ride. So if we give them a reason, people will come. It's a, uh, there's a charity event or if it's just a barbecue down the street, like people will come if there's a reason. They just need a reason to justify picking up their bikes and going somewhere. Okay, yeah. I think that, that's what we can deliver. So we're going to uh, capitalize on the on the club component and the subscription model. Um, that That's one thing. The others, uh, you know, it, are the tours, uh, shortening the tours because especially the younger demographic, you know, because they travel so much, they'd rather get in one more trip rather than spending 10 nights somewhere. They do three nights here, three nights there. Mm -hmm. So we're looking into that as well To You can't obviously do uh, Route 66 in three days. I mean, you can if, you, if you're one of those iron butts, but, yeah. uh, you know, you, you it's, you're on vacation. So we'll, let's make it easy. So uh, we have a few of those sh shorter tours that we'll offer in the future. And then additionally is... Uh, in addition, we have a new product component that we launched in the Las Vegas market is our off-road side-by-side uh, -side tours. Okay. So we have, a, we have a tour there, a tour component that we launched in the second quarter of this year uh, in a soft launch. And then the, our proper launch will be towards the fall once the heat is dying down a little bit in the Vegas area. And we have Yamaha and Polaris side-by-sides and we do a guided tour through the desert. So it starts at... The Pioneer Saloon, that is, uh, I think, the, the oldest uh, saloon in Southern Nevada or something. You have like bullet holes in the in the in the, in the uh, uh, wood walls there, and we actually go out in the desert. So it's not a prefix track. You, we actually go into desert. We go up to six thousand feet on 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 a, on a mountain there, and then drop back down. You see wildlife, the wild mustangs, and we have uh, clean air uh, helmets as well that give you the fresh air. Even even if you went. I did it at 104 degrees and I was comfortable in the car because I had the fresh air blowing into my helmet. Wow. Uh, that's really cool. And we have cooling vests that you can put on. There's an intercom in each car so you can laugh and giggle together and complain about the driver's driving. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you follow the guide through the desert. So that's a really cool experience. So we're looking into uh, getting more people excited about power sports in general because, and you know this best, the one thing that prevents people from entering the motorcycle industry is the M1 uh, yeah. license that you need, right? So with the side-by-sides, you don't need this. You have a car license and you can go. So I think it will help us, you know, drive people towards power sports business, but also uh, people that may not know that Eagle Rider exists. They have a license, but they may not know that we exist and what we do. This will be a nice entryway into uh, the world of Eagle Rider. And, you know, Eagle Rider, the name can can mean anything. Anything that's writable uh, falls under the umbrella of Eagle Rider. So that's another focus of ours, the off-road tours and see if we can uh, launch more of those uh, across the U.S. Because Vegas, obviously, is a very competitive market when it comes to outdoor tours or in general. Yeah. And I always say in Vegas, you don't compete for money. You compete for time uh, because mm -hmm. people have one weekend. They're going to do one nightclub, one day club, a couple of restaurants, maybe see a show. And then you have another five hours. What do you do in those five hours? And hopefully they'll choose an off-road tour with us. Okay, so this off-road tour, is this on motorcycles off-road and then you show up and the side-by-sides are there waiting for you to ride? No, it's all side-by-sides. Uh, but we are working on a specialty tour right now for the end of um, uh, October with our partner Yamaha. And it will be a combination between on-road, uh, on motorcycles on-road and off-road, as well as uh, the last day you show up in your, uh, on your motorcycle and you park it right next to the side-by-side, -side, and then you also have an off-road component with side-by-side. -side. So we're combining on-road, off-road motorcycling with side-by-side, -side, and we do all of this in three days. Uh, like I said, you know, a little shorter time frame. That will be at the uh, end of October uh, that, we're, that we're launching this and piloting that tour. Hopefully that will work well because it combines, you know, all these different uh, different things. And it's I think we'll ride about 100 miles or so off-road, oh, which wow. will be well, that sounds really fun because uh, I've driven a couple side by sides, and they are a blast, especially if you're in the right area. I mean, they are just so fun, but they also are kind of pricey. And to park one in your garage, you got to clear up seven motorcycles to make room for the side by side. If you can just show up and have a day of blasting around on one with Eagle Rider, that sounds ideal. Yeah, I think so too. And and we only charge for the for the driver. All passengers are free. Yeah. Because the car is going out anyways. That's how we look at it. You know, if it's one person or two or three or four, the car is going out. And, you know, the driver, you can switch driving and that's no problem either. So if you want to take, um, it's about a two hour uh, tour, just pure riding in the, in the, the uh, through the desert. And when I did this, this tour, I was really amazed by, by the way the team has set it up. And 
what I had to get used to is with those side by sides, you in the beginning you drive it like a car, like you see a bump coming up and you're going to slow down. Yeah. And with the side by sides, you just want to power through it because <laughs> it's going to be much more stable with you know with the, with the shocks. Uh, it's going to be much more stable if you if you power through those um those those bumps and uh, then with a the car so i learned that so rather accelerate and, and power through the holes than just go on and, and bounce through them mm. fun experience well motorcycles are powered by engines and side by sides are too so i see a lot of crossover there i think that's cool that you're you're mingling them yeah yeah i think it's uh, i hope it's going to be successful like once we combine really the motorcycling part and the and the side by side part I think that will be because there's something for everybody. And even if you get on the motorcycle and you do the tour and then you show up at the saloon and you drop the motorcycle or drop off the motorcycle, I should say, don't drop them, but drop them off uh, and then get in the, in the side by side, your family could join as well. And that's what we're looking at as well. Like how can we, you know, we call it the adventure crew. It could be a bachelorette party. It could be a bachelor party. It could be a family because some of the side by sides, the Yamahas, for example, they have a raised uh, back row so the kids can actually see as well. And you're not just looking at the back of a seat, but you're a little higher in in those in some of those side by sides that you can actually look around as well. And they have a great experience, not just look at a door and a in a back seat and not see where they're going. So that that will help as well with family entertainment, especially you know I've met a few a few riders now over the past two months and. Once you have kids, they they tend to put the uh, motorcycle to the side for a little while. Mm. Uh, it prevents them from riding. But if you do this as a family, everybody's buckled in for four point uh, harness and you know have the helmets on. That's that's a cool experience. It kind of gets them back into the power sports business, but also uh, there's no problem bringing the family along. Yeah. Cool. So 2025, uh, any other things that you're uh, trying to hit? Uh, keep eagle rider advancing yeah i think one one focus of mine is the are the eagle rider exclusives like the cvo like the yamaha tour where, that we combine you know the off-road on-road and side by sides because i think um we have the platform and we can really leverage this platform for all of our partners to to come in and, and present their models and present their their products in a, in a more, like you said, extended demo ride or, you know, an experience. So we're going to shift more towards the experiential character of what we really do. We don't just rent motorcycles. We, you know, we enable dreams and we, we give you the tool, but you can do with this tool as you please. And I cannot predict the weather. I can't predict the route that you're taking unless you're with me on the, on the guided tour, I can tell you where we go, but it's, it's up to you to create those memories yourself. And, uh, that's that's what we're really going to focus on is the experience, uh, you know, the the club, the community character of of the motorcycle industry. And when people ask me why I would transition from the fitness industry to the uh, motorcycle industry, well, one because I ride and I I think it's very it's a very cool uh, it's a very cool industry and uh, there's a passion there. And and you know now we're shifting gears at Eagle Rider into the new demographics and make sure that we're around for the next fifty years to come and longer. But also, I think the fitness industry is very similar to the motorcycle industry. And you meet these guys at the gym, especially at Gold's Gym. You don't know what the person does for a living standing next to you lifting weights. I've worked out, I still work out at Gold's. And uh, I see these guys every night when we, we work out together. And I don't know if they drive a G-Wagon or a beat-up Kia. I don't know because it's just about lifting weights. It's just about the passion of going to work out. And somebody may work out uh, like, a I don't know, some some broker just closed the main deal and you just blow off steam and he goes and works out and the other guy just finished finished his shift you know at a fast food place but they work out together and i think that's that's a really cool thing about the fitness industry and i can also see it in the motorcycle industry where it doesn't matter what you do for a living you just show up and you ride together and it, it works across all different levels of society and it's very inclusive and as long as you ride you know people are like oh i just have a small bike it doesn't matter you ride so you come with us and that's really cool. And same with, you know, somebody who's trying to lose weight in the fitness industry is like, oh, I'm not that strong or I'm not there, but you're here. You're not sitting on, you're not on the couch. You're here, you're working out. So that's what I like about both, both industries. So we would like to in 25, like lean into that community component more and, you know, bridge the bridge, uh, you know, the gaps also between different motorcycle groups. Like I said earlier, the Harley guys versus the performance bikes versus, you know, the the hipsters on the cafe racers and, 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 and bring them together. So that's a focus. And then obviously we're ramping up for the, um, 
uh, centennial of Route 66. Oh, yeah. up, I believe it's in 26. So, but uh, celebrations start in 25, I heard. So we're looking into what we can do there for the special uh, 100th birthday of Route 66. That's obviously a big one, uh, not just for international tours, but I think also for, for domestic uh, riders that we have in the U.S. Okay, I see our meeting is, uh, we're nearly out of time on it. This uh, has gone pretty quickly. I, I think we covered all the ground. Is there anything else about Eagle Rider that you want to leave uh, leave people with? I don't, I don't think so. I think we touched on everything. And it really is, what I learned is sometimes people think it's so complicated to get a motorcycle license, but it actually is not which may be a good or a bad thing in the US, you know, you get compared to where I'm from in Germany, you have to take classes and, and lessons and all of this. So yeah. it's about $1,500 to get your license in, in Germany compared yeah. to what is it? 30 bucks over here. Yeah. Uh, but if you do it in the right way and you do the safety, safety uh, course as well, I think it's, it's such an easy entry into the industry. People just don't know about it. So hopefully we can do our part as eager rider to attract more riders, uh, not just for our sake, but for the industry's sake. Mm. And then, you know, make make those bikes available for them and uh, and move them onto more more butts and seats and, and just enjoy it because it really is, uh, you know, you have those life changing rides. Uh, you know, I've done one from L.A. to Seattle and took PCH all the way down the 101 and PCH. Mm. It was a 10 day trip and I loved it and I still think about it. And you learn about learn a lot about yourself as well. But then you also have not just those unforgettable moments or those life-changing moments, but you also just have fun rides where you get together. So hopefully at Eagle Rider, you know, by simplifying our, our product offering and our value proposition and uh, making those bikes and side-by-sides accessible to more to more groups, we can help uh, the industry grow and also help our OEM partners, you know, with retail bikes. So hopefully we can we can do that in the future and and make it make it more accessible to more people. Yeah, Eagle Rider seems like it's uh, giving a ticket to accessing beautiful motorcycle memories. So, I do hope so. I'm a little biased, but I do I do hope so. And I've used it, you know, for years and years before you know joining. And uh, whenever I had German colleagues come over, when I was still with the German group that owned Gold's Gym, we would come to this location here and rent bikes for the day and just create memories in the canyons of Malibu. So it really is that those those bonding moments, and I think more people should enjoy them. I couldn't agree more. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Of course. Thank you so much, Kevin. Okay. For American Rider's Insider Podcast, I'm Kevin Dude. Make sure you visit AmericanRider.com where you can get the latest in V-Twin news and reviews and subscribe to print and digital editions of American Rider magazine. Thanks for listening and keep the rubber side down.